Who are we thinking this week? Who are the contenders for Waco with this new course and the old course combined? Who are we thinking is going to end up on top? You're not getting anything out of me, pal. <laughs> Oh, I got I got to confirm. Have we submitted our pick check? Survivor picks have been in. Our shiners have not been disclosed. So if you want to hold those for shiners, we can do that. Let's, I was going to definitely change my today. answer, Smitty. Definitely. Yeah, that's a bold strategy. Probably smart for a guy who generally is in last and, and looking for some help. So, I mean, I, I, I see you working. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> Applaud the effort, but th- this fish ain't biting, son. <laughs> we're, we're smarter than we look. <laughs> You don't get to be an old fish without turning down the the, the, the garbage baits for years. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard the way they wiggle that worm. Okay. Oh, All right. All right. So moving right along really quickly, we're going to instantly move into a new segment. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome into the Players Meeting, a Win Dummies production where we talk disc golf and disc golf pro tour. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. And thanks to an anonymous donor, you can now find this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and anywhere else where you can get your podcasts. Let's go. I'm joined, as always, by the real stars of the show, the one-time world champ, Chris Smith, a.k.a. Smitty, and the Step Pup Master, the zero-time world champ, Mr. Ronnie Unruh. Hey, fellas, how you doing tonight? Doing good, man. Sounds like we are uh, got the George Jefferson syndrome going on. We're moving on up. That's right. Moving That's on right. up, baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what, what are you fun. wearing? That's great. What are you wearing, Ronnie? Oh, I'm, uh, you know, supporting my boy A.B., you know, he's, he's had a pretty good start to the year. So yeah, figured, you're looking yeah, good. Figured I'd wrap him a little bit. Yeah, Heck I yeah. love it. I love to see it. We have a little uh, surprise a little bit later in the show, kind of uh, to highlight AB. But as always, you're in for a treat tonight. Although there is no disc golf pro tour, there was still some disc golf action this weekend. So we're going to recap that. Also take a look into the next disc golf pro tour tournament, Waco. We'll have a fun top five segment that I hope you're excited about and also gives you a chance to weigh in. And you don't want to miss our Wheel of Debate and our weekly picks for Waco. This is going to be a good one. So let's jump right in to the action. As always, what's popping? What's been happening around the world of disc golf? I'm actually just going to give a quick recap. So we're going to start in San Angelo, Texas, at the 22nd annual Crust of the Concho. Bradley Williams takes it down by five strokes over Robert Burridge. The Texas Cactus shot 1040 rated for the weekend. That guy's good. Uh, that guy is good. How about uh, 128 PDJ wins good? Oh. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll draw back to my original statement. That guy's good. I, I wonder... What would be fun is find out how many players have a hundred PDJ wins. Who, who's broken in that triple digit? I think that'd be a fun stat to know. Stat Mando, way can you get now. on that? Yeah, help us out. I, I'd say way more now than before. There's so well, one. There's so many more events that you can play, but with the advent of the uh, the flexes and and one day kind of stuff, and and sometimes we can play multiple events of those in the same day. I mean, that's definitely inflated the number some, but. Anybody with a uh, hundred wins of any kind, that's uh, pretty special. We got a guy, uh, other way over here this way. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be closing in on it here uh, before too much longer, most likely. I mean, what what, what are you up to, dude? Eighty, yeah. twenty more. So, yeah, um, so yeah. I mean, any, anybody with a hundred wins is is something pretty special. Take yeah. a. Uh, Take stab at Bradley Williams' career earnings. Two hundred and fifty thousand. He played a lot when there wasn't good money, so I'm going to say just two hundred. Two hundred forty-six thousand. Dang, that's a great guess, Ronnie. You have it up, don't you? I do not. No, I just. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, dude's a stud. Well, in Mobile, Alabama, the 31st annual City of Mobile Championships, this one went into a five-hole playoff between Matty O and Ezra Robinson, and Matty O took it down. He shot 1056 rated golf on the weekend. That dude's pretty- good. <laughs> I think it's nice, though, that Ezra's right with him. To go into five playoff, that's... That's a fun one to, I wish we would get to see that, but I saw a clip of it somewhere like of just like the final hole of Ezra missing his putt. He had like some weird hyzer putt that was like almost impossible to make. Um, and Matteo was parked, but man, some of those little tournaments like that, I mean, it's still an eight tier, but man, I wish we had coverage for just everything. I could never get enough of it. Who has more wins, Matteo or the cactus? S- PDGA sanction. Yep. PDGA sanction wins. Lucas is up. Um, or the cactus. Cactus. I would, I would agree. Uh, That's true. But, but Maddie's got so many of that Southeast tour that was around for us. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. I mean, I've heard him say that maybe he might have like two or 300 more. Yeah, of those, his da- which is his crazy. Dad was, uh, his dad was a big wig in that whole Southern Nationals movement, so I'm sure Matt, from the time he's a little kid, probably, you know, got dragged around to play those. Okay, so let's. Uh, who's got more money? Career earnings. <sighs> Mattio. I would still say Brad, but I bet it's close. Not even close. Matteo has 84 wins and $330,000 in winnings. Hmm. So that's what's what it's telling you. It's because we know he's only won one pro tour event. That dude won a whole bunch of A tiers. Yeah. And I would bet Bradley Williams probably has a lot of, uh, some of his wins might be an AM. Some of his wins might be at smaller, like you were saying, flex starts and things. Yep. But, yeah, still both impressive numbers all the way around on both of them. Incredible. Yeah, that's that's no crazy. Well, at that same tournament in the FPO field, I think it is worth mentioning that Holly Finley won FPO by 37 strokes, 969 rated for the event. Sweeney, yeah. anything you want to say? The other chick was really bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, no offense to whoever finished second place out there, but clearly Holland was playing in a field that, uh, you know, she knew she knew on Friday she was going to win the golf tournament. Yeah, no doubt. Well, let's jump right into the memorial, the one that, thank goodness for Terry Miller, giving us some disc golf when the disc golf pro tour isn't accessible. Thank you, Terry, for that, because we got to watch some good stuff. I want to quickly mention the FPO. Jennifer Allen had a six-stroke lead after the second round. Owen battled back and not only won, but won by eight strokes. So congratulations to Owen. And maybe a collapse by Jen Allen. I think she shot over par for the last round, which is surprising. And I wouldn't be doing Juliana Corver any justice if I didn't mention her 28-stroke victory in FP50. Another tally for Juliana. We can't see any stats on how anything played out, but from the little bit of coverage that I've watched, well, a little bit, I've watched three of the four rounds so far of the men, that uh, that third and fourth round, it was pretty windy. And Jennifer's never been super strong on the putting greens. And yeah, a little wind to that. And I'm, I'm guessing that's probably where it went bad for her. I know that Owen it doesn't care. She's just going to be jamming them all day long. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes four straight for Juliana out there in the desert. Two and 40 and two and 50. I kind of feel like if she wanted to play in that, in that age protected division, she would probably win every week she decided to register. No doubt. Yep. And before I mention the MPO, I do want to mention the MP40. Congrats to Kale LaVisca, who was three strokes back going into the final round. He ends up winning by two over KJ, not USA, and the USDGC's champion, Steve Brinster. Kale's good. See previous statement. 
<laughs> insert previous statement here so the men's side was exciting did you get to see how this finished ronnie like did you get to watch the coverage so i haven't watched round four i followed it on the scores uh while i was playing a tournament myself um you know what in, in into your comment before about you know thank goodness terry's out there and you know because it's not pro man i don't care if it's pro tour national tour whatever the memorial is always going to be a big event to me yeah. I mean, that was a big one. That was one of the biggest events for a long, long time. And whether it's an A tier now or a national tour, or a pro tour or whatever, it, whatever it's going to be. I mean, that's still a huge event. So I'm glad that. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm glad we got Terry out there bringing us some coverage from it and getting it up so quickly the oh, following yeah. day that we that we can stay with it uh, as it's going on. If you haven't heard a B shot an 11, 14 rated 17 under in the second round. Whew. But in the end, it came down to Gannon Burr and Goose, Aaron Gossage. Goose took a bird on 17 and Burr bogeyed, making Burr only one up going into the final hole. But on that final hole, Goose threw OB, and Gannon was able to keep it safe and get the two-stroke victory. But in my mind, fellas, no one's going to remember the victory. Everyone's only going to be talking about this 17-under by a B, which is incredible. 11, 14 rated. Yeah, I think you're right. I think in the end, it's going to be far overshadowed, right? When we look two or three years from now, we'll remember the Memorial 2024 for what a B did 17 under par, but he technically only threw the disc 38 times. It, it was a shot under par, I guess I should say on every hole strokes wise, throws wise. He did take a penalty on the first hole. Birdie he went the OB sheet. on the first. Yep. Takes an OB on number one. Ooh. makes it and birdies the shack starting on the second tee. I mean, if you step up and play, you know, I'll, I'll look at Smitty sometimes and, you know, what might be on 14 and time I'm, I'm, I'm birdie into the shack. You might as well get ready for it, <laughs> but I've never done it on the second tee. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's just ridiculousness. And uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think this tournament is going to be remembered for, for what Anthony did. Who had just, uh, I think you, we, you mentioned this online, Ronnie, but who just had like last year, I think Adam Hammes had a 16 under, uh, it was, it might've been a couple years ago. Okay. Um, that course fountain Hills in particular is kind of known for giving up the big one, but it's not like it's easy. I mean, even those big rounds are still like, well, well over 1100 rated. So, I mean, your, your, your thousand break is still falling, you know, two, three, four or five under par. So it's not like they're gimmies, but that course has kind of been known to, to give up the big one. Paul's got the highest rated round of all time there. Well, it's, that's been several years ago, but that was 1132. Uh, also 17 under par and Anthony's uh, Anthony's round was actually the fifth highest rate around in PJ history. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, like Ronnie said, Fountain Hills gives up high ratings, super high ratings. In fact, uh, Andrew Presnell shared a stat that if somebody would shoot 17 down at Northwoods black, 17 down or Northwoods black or gold, the, co the course in a Eureka. And they were trying to compare it to if it'd ever be 1200 and it, I mean, 17 down there would be incredible. And it wasn't even anywhere near, you know, much way higher than what uh, rounds of Fountain Hill are giving up. So just based on stroke differential and points per stroke type deal. So, it, yeah. And Anthony also birdied the first hole in the third round. So I got 18 in a row. <laughs> did he get? Did, did his streak stop then? there? Yeah. You can say two is not easy at Vista. That's crazy. That's just absolutely nuts stuff. And, and a little deeper stat on that. Anthony was even par through nine holes the first round at Fountain Hills. Got seven out of nine on that back nine. 17 in the second round and opens with a birdie. So he had had 25 birdies in 28 holes. How many rounds do you think he's played out there? Oh, countless. I don't right. think he could even, I don't think he could even estimate. Absolutely incredible. But I think another part that's going to overshadow because of Terry Miller and his coverage was cupcake and his putting or lack of putting took quite a while. Let's talk a little bit about that. How do you guys feel about people not calling this? So I watched the coverage and I actually did not mind Aaron's explanation as to why he wasn't calling it. I could understand if we were going like 35 seconds, 
40 seconds. You know, if it's somewhere in the ballpark of the 30 second rule, I don't have a problem with that. Um, like I said, I played in a tournament yesterday and the wind was really blowing. There was a couple times I might have got close to that 30 second number and maybe I went a second or two over. Terry was saying that he was pushing almost a minute on average for that putt to the point where we had to actually either speed it up and go in 5x speed or cut 45 seconds out of his putt. I mean, I don't. Look, you got to call it. Dude, you got to putt faster. If you can't putt faster, then I'm sorry, man. You can't play at this level. 48 seconds on average is what I heard somewhere else. So that's a, that's a long time. Now, I've played with people who are notoriously slow putters, slow players, and not to this extreme, not 48 seconds. That's a long time to stand over a putt. You know, if you're, if you're lining up a putt and something weird happens, a car drives by, a, a dog runs out, a horn honks, you know, you might step off of it, but this guy is just standing over it. I feel like it would affect my game. It would drive me nuts. And I, I, I would I would give him his one freebie and say, I'd probably give him two freebies. I'd probably say, look, cupcake dude, you got to go, man. You got to get going quicker. And if it happened again, I'd say, that's going to be your warning right there. Jake, you got to go faster, dude. It would suck and it would ruin the vibe on the card. I don't know cupcake. I don't know anything about him. I don't know how he would take something like that. From what I understand, he wants to putt, but he can't get the disc out of his hand. Like some of those pumps, he's wanting to throw that sucker. He man, he's a good putter too. He is. He's a really good putter, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. you can tell. I mean, just listening to some of the explanations from people, it's it's clearly a mental block. He just he just can't let it go. Really strange for someone like for someone like me who's a terrible putter. I could see if it was me not wanting to let it go because something bad might happen. But this dude it just throws laser beams right in there. It's it's really strange. And he's on the uh, he's on the roster for Waco, so it'll be fun to see. Interesting. I don't know about fun, but it'll be interesting to see if if it continues there. If we'll hear headlines of somebody calling him on it. Well, so. what if he gets on the live coverage where there is no cutting it out? You know, we struggle with this with Gannon, his first year on tour. Gannon was really, really slow his first year out there on tour. And he it was kind of the same thing, like that dude just couldn't turn loose. But, um, I mean, I'm rooting for the guy. I, n- I never root against anybody, really. But I don't – I have fin- financial considerations to see you not play well. Um, <laughs> I, it'll be awkward if that dude's on live coverage. Put him with Brody. Oh, my goodness. Brody would call him in a heartbeat. He's ready to call him now. Let's let's do a little shift of gears and talk about the upcoming tournament. We just said Cupcake's going to be there. But Waco is coming up this week. It's four rounds this year. We're not just playing Bravos East. We're throwing in a new course, a ball golf course. What have you guys heard about the new course? I haven't seen much. I've shared one set of videos with Ronnie that Brody and Ezra did last year after Waco. So I don't know if it's changed. I've shared a caddy book with Ronnie and we've looked at that a little bit. Um, It looks like it's going to have a lot of long holes like traditional ball golf courses do. I, uh, I wish it all stayed at the beast. I think a tour stop like that where distance is not a premium is, is needed. It's fun to watch. So, and it's, it's not like they're easy birds either. They have to thread lines and throw great shots. And I love watching the beast. I think it's exciting. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, it's great that we're getting an, an extra round of disc golf to watch this year from there. But man, the beast was one of my absolute favorite tour stops. It's a course that I always felt like I could play on, right? It still challenged those guys, right? I mean, yeah, Paul's got a, what, a, a crazy round there a few years ago, and we've seen some big rounds pop off there. But you get such a great mix of players in the mix I'm at, at that course. I mean, Big German won there two years in a row. Kale LaVisca has been on the lead card the final round the last two years. right? It does, you don't have to throw 650 feet. Obviously, it's always going to help you. But it's more about how, how, how do you get it from 1's tee to 18's basket in the cleanest way possible. And, and I think we'll miss a little bit of that. But... But yeah, you sent me the caddy book. The caddy book looks awesome. I don't know who does the artwork for the Pro Tours caddy books, but they look awesome. They, they should be 
they should be making more money because they they make every course look fantastic. Yep. So this is just kind of on the fly, but me and Travis talked quite a bit, and he had a hot take about the changes in the course. And I want you guys' opinion on this. So his hot take was they changed the course on the DGPT too often. Every single year, every single tournament has one or two holes that are different, longer, different angle, new OB, Mando's completely redesigned par. It eliminates any chance at history and forces stupid comments from analysts like, well, they shot a new course record because it's a new course. How do you guys feel about that? I, I think it's ridiculous that we talk about it every, every single week. There's a, a the first round, somebody shot a course record. I mean, it's, yeah, they pushed a hole back 30 feet or moved a tee back 50 feet, and they put a Mando in. Is that really a new golf course? I, I get tired of it. I don't know if they're intentionally trying to do that, but I, I get sick of hearing Doss have to talk about it after the first round every <laughs> single week. Well, this is a this is strange because I disagree with you completely. I, I don't I don't disagree with the fact that I don't want to hear about new course record. I don't care about that. But if the changes they're making make the hole more of a thinking hole or a better hole, I, I'm all about it. I don't care so much. I don't think about uh, course records moving forward and forward and forward throughout there as long as it's bettering the overall viewing experience and tournament experience for the players. I'm, I'm for making little changes here and there. So I don't disagree with that, but I wonder, and this is all going to be opinionated. I wonder if the changes they're making are truly helping the whole or not. Right. And I think that could be something that is looked at too. Sometimes it's just, Hey, let's make this a little further. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily help the whole. I'm on the belief that making a whole longer is not going to make it better for the pro tour. Look at uh, Jones Gold when they switched it around. They made it incredibly long, and as predicted, the farthest throwers in the world, if it wouldn't have been 1,000-mile-an-hour winds, would have destroyed that place. And they didn't make the holes better. They made them actually easier for the farther throwers to win. They didn't make the, they didn't make the disc golf better. They, they To make it better, they could have pinched the landing zones. They could have... I mean, they're they're doing it all at natural OB or artificial OB, so they could have put bins where they needed them and give you the opportunity to land safe or cut a corner. So many other better ways to make a hole better, in my opinion, than adding 50 feet, which the top 20 players in the world are all about adding 100 feet to a hole. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and they had such an easy case study to go off of to know that it, it doesn't work. You know, I'll, I'll use professional professional golf as 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 my reference here. Tiger Woods is my favorite all time athlete, hands down. When Tiger started winning in the late 90s and in early 2000s, when he became just absolutely dominant, all of these tournaments started all, all these courses just started making the courses longer to, quote unquote, Tiger proof the golf course. All it did was make it that much more likely that Tiger was going to win because mm -hmm. he hit it further than everybody. And in, in that case, he hit it straighter than most people. And it just made it to where the, 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 the size of the field that could actually compete compressed even more to where there was just a handful of guys that could show up and win on a week. And they've done, they do the same thing on the pro tour where they try to do that. Right. You, you can add 30 feet. Those guys don't care. Those guys have as much distance as they need every on any hole they need to. If they need to get 30 more feet, they're going to get it anyway. What's what's it really doing except for taking the guys who who don't have 30 more feet to get and just eliminating them from, from any kind of contention? Yep, 100%. Yep. All right, no doubt. Who are we thinking this week? Who are the contenders for Waco with this new course and the old course combined? Who are we thinking is going to end up on top? You're not getting anything out of me, pal. <laughs> oh, I got. I got to confirm. Are our picks submitted as of? Have we submitted our picks yet? Because if not, I don't know that I'm gonna. I'm gonna give that away. I'll, I'll throw a couple people out there if you want me to, but I'm not. So, I'm not giving away uh, my ace in the hole. Survivor picks have been in. Our shiners have not been disclosed. So if you want to hold those for shiners, we can do that here in a bit. I was going to definitely change my answer, Smitty. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's a. That's a <laughs> 
that's that's a bold strategy. You know, it's it's probably smart for a guy who you know generally you know is in last and, and looking for some help. So I mean, I, I, I see you working. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah. Well, I think as we talk about our picks later, we will talk about who else we think has a good okay. shot and who we're looking forward to watching. So yeah, yeah I think sure. we save that. Good yeah. try though. <laughs> hey, Applaud. Apl- apl- Applaud the effort, but th- this fish ain't biting, son. <laughs> we're, we're smarter than we look. <laughs> you, you don't get to be an old fish without turning turning down the the, the, the garbage baits for years. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard the way they wiggle that worm. Okay. Oh, All right. All right. So moving right along really quickly, we're going to instantly move into a new segment. Bump it dum Our top five. And for our top five, because AB won his first ever at chess.com, we are going to talk about Discraft and our top five Discraft molds. So as always, Ronnie, Smitty, you both sent me your picks and what you thought the other would pick as well. So we're going to go through these one at a time. I think, Ronnie, you won last time, didn't you? I think I've got the ball this time. Yeah, the ball is in your court, sir. You'd like to start us off. Or or, or, or both courts if I had it. Um, so, yeah, top five Discraft molds. Everybody knows I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Discraft plastic. Um, I, I throw a lot of it now. Um, I don't have an exclusive bag or a sponsorship, but it's certainly they certainly make my favorite Frisbees. My number five Discraft mold. The wasp, I love the wasp. It's uh, it's 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 probably my favorite mid range. Yep. So that will definitely be a point for Smitty. He had had the old wasp on there, but he had it as number three. Yeah, I I feel I feel like this is stacked against Ronnie. He's going to have to play pretty hard to uh <laughs> to get me here because you know I know his bag. I know he wouldn't throw something he doesn't like. Um, I haven't thrown a Discraft disc in 10 years. Basically went from exclusively to Discraft on their pro team to throw it all out. And here's a whole bunch of stuff. Try this because we're starting making discs. But my number five and dude, if I had, if, if I was to pick up a disc and throw it back in my bag, this might be one of them. The ZXL, such a fantastic disc. It's a, by today's standards, it's not a a bomber disc, but man, it's that point and shoot a little bit longer than a mid range, just money, 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 money disc. And they may have something new compared to it. I don't know. Yep. Ronnie got that one as number four. Um, So a point for Ronnie as well. All right. Somebody for your number four. My number four was a a disc that Ron Converse turned me on to. It was a a disc you could never throw too far. Could always come up short of any hole you needed. The Z Extreme. Man, I had it on there and I took it off at number five. (laughs) Gosh, dog, and I had it on there too. All right, Ronnie, what's your number four, dude? My number four, um, I've putted with them for gosh as long as i can remember at this point at least 15 years um challenger i almost I got the challenger in there you didn't yeah. put the challenger he did on not there? he did not <laughs> i feel like i'm i feel like i stole one there then i figured you'd have that one for sure yeah man pinky um yeah I've, like 12 15 years something like that i've been putting with challengers love them best the best throwing putter i've ever had um, and, and I putt with them too. So love the yeah, you, th- you definitely throw them better than you putt with them. Oh, that's a, <laughs> un- 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 unnecessary dig at a guy that, you know, always, you know, talks about how bad he putts, but he doesn't really need other people to remind him of it. Appreciate it though. 49 seconds. Why don't, of next? <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead and jump into number three? I'll just go ahead and take, take your role away from you. Um, my number three, my number three, I've got, uh, uh, the force, um, something that's always in my bag. I, I, it's been a long time since I played around without one, man. Love them. 
They are really good. Yep, and Smitty had that one at number four for you, so a point for Smitty there. So two to one currently, Smitty in the lead. Okay, my number three. This is a, this was the first disc in the Discraft lineup that I threw it, and I thought, mm-hmm. boy, this disc makes disc golf way easier. It was red, it had a white stamp, ESP Surge. Fantastic disc, went a long ways. Didn't have a super fat uh, wing. Man, you could chuck those things. They were, I, I loved them. Yeah, easy to throw, man. Uh, I actually contemplated a, a surge uh, for my list. I haven't thrown one in a, in a long time. I, I don't really throw that style anymore. I, I try to throw a little more over stability than that. But yeah, surge was a great disc. My number two. Probably your number two, the nuke. I just feel like the nuke is a, a great long range flyer. I didn't so he, he did him. not he did not get that for you, but it's also not his number two. Oh wow. Nuke's not in my top five. No kidding. His number two, Ronnie's number two was a shocker, shocker for me. I don't know if it'll be a shocker for Smitty because of, of just the era. Um Number two for me, the X2. I loved that thing. It had almost like a, a, a mid-range grip to it, but it but you could throw it. Man, I threw that, I threw the just the hell out of that thing 20 years ago, man. I mean, that was that was one that was I'd have three or four of those in fly die in my bag. Mm-hmm. You know, and I loved them. They they were also fantastic plastic in those that elite. That's what they mm-hmm. called it at that time. They were, they were tacky and and durable both. And at a time, uh, you know, DX plastic and D plastic, and that was one of the early ones to do something different. Lucas, have you ever even seen one? No, no, I didn't even know what it was. That's why it was shocking to me. I'm like, what is this? There was a whole a whole family of those. There was the. Uh, X2, the XS, the XL, the Extra, the Extreme. Extreme, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The all were great. Yep, all were mm-hmm. great. XS, XS got real close to making my list too, man. I used to I used to throw those things for rollers all the time. Mm-hmm. All right, so number one. What's our gonna score? Be, um, right now it is same. So Smitty two, Ronnie one. You guys didn't well, score we know at number, all. We know what my number one is, so it's not, it's not like it's a big mystery. Uh, I, I I I firmly believe the Undertaker is the best disc I've ever put in my bag, um, and the most consistent disc I've ever thrown. Uh, I could, I I honestly believe I could remove everything out of my bag except for an Undertaker and a putter and score comparably to an entire lineup. Yeah, you love it. You throw it well, for sure. You do throw it extremely and well. Believe it or not, I nailed it. Yeah, he got uh, that one. Not, yeah, was, I knew I was giving you two freebies there, but I and I, and I couldn't miss one of them. And moved it down. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you, you're going to probably get my number one as well. So I'm going to win by one. I went with the uh, the Z Buzz. Not the not the current runs. I don't. I don't like the way the new ones feel at all, but like the uh, the old first runs and the ten year anniversaries and all those super duper flat ones. Oh, mm-hmm. baby, those things are money. So, yeah, I threw <laughs> I threw the heck out of those things. Yeah, yeah, got, I remember you got on those. Yeah, I got rid of a box of them much cheaper than I should have when I uh, <laughs> when I was done with this crap. I look back and cry a little bit. Yeah, I remember you throwing those when you were when you were sponsored by Discraft. Um, I I never really have been a huge fan of the Buzz. That that's kind of uh, that's kind of the one Discraft disc that I don't really care for. It just it's a little shallow in my hand. Um, but that twenty year is actually pretty all right. That thing's made my bag. It's it's got a very specific slot, but it but it has made my bag. So well, you're a you're I'm, a le- rock I'm learning guy. to like it. You're a rock guy, right? I th- 
which yeah. is why you like the wasp because they're the same disc basically i think it's a, it's a discraft it's a discraft rock is all it is uh, but i like the plastic better than i like that i like uh that i like the rock that's why it's it's my choice yep you want to go yeah, you want to go over the some of the ones that we missed yeah i've got a couple that i was tempted to put on there and i didn't for the majority of my discraft career i threw the p out of the z predator that was like my main disc for every shot. I had three predators and I had a right turn, a straight, and a left turn predator. How do you not? I saw you throw that disc. So, how is that disc not on your list? Ronnie had it at number two. It was my honorable was like mention. This. It was my honorable so mention had, for the ZXL. I had three discs that I thought for sure. My top three, I was like, there's no way he leaves a buzz, a pred. And a Stratus off his list. I uh, know the, the, Strat- the Stratus and the Predator didn't make it. I think there was shenanigans. I'm <laughs> no, calling shenanigans. A lot of times, Stratus was just to mess with people and have fun because that that really is a fun disc to throw, man. I uh, I think I might have more Stratus aces than anybody in the world. I've got to be up there. I got I got double digits on that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Ron's got a few. Oh yeah, that's who got me onto it, of course. I bet Ron's got a few. Yeah. Yeah, that yep. was my three misses. Oh, actually, uh, I only got one of yours right. No, two. 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 I had you at yep. number five. Number five, I had Cyclone for you. I didn't know if you were a Cyclone guy or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was a fun one. In fact, I remember putting a, a Cyclone in my bag at Beloit one year after the Cyclone was long out of, you know, the, the mainstay just to throw it on hole seven. Just because it was like kind of like a ZXL. It would fly straight just a little farther than a mid-range. You didn't have to throw it hard. Mm-hmm. Here's what I missed for you, in case you were wondering. Uh, at number five, I had a, a putter undertaker. At number four, <laughs> I had an overstable undertaker. <laughs> at number three, I had a mid-range undertaker. <laughs> and at number two, I had your long-range undertaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... All are definitely in my bag, but I but I but I only chose the uh, the straight Undertaker as 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 my number one choice. <laughs> Good thing I changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I. It's always been uh, my favorite manufacturer. They've always just made discs that fit my game the best, um, and the lineup's long for me. I can I. I don't throw too many molds anymore. I keep it pretty much down the middle, but uh, yeah, at one time or another, I've had all those discs we mentioned tonight in, in my bag. Yeah, they make, yeah, a lot of great, great Frisbees. That's a fun discussion. Yeah, I really like that. Let's jump into another topic. Dun, da, da, dun. Wheel of debate. Going down, son. Probably. Speaking of going down. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're about to get down into this. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you guys are thinking. Uh, we're about to get, get going here. The votes are in. And Smitty won the last one. Oh. Um, so now Smitty is up two to one. I will say that I don't know if people are voting properly. Um, People are, I think, are just voting with what they think instead. Um, This is like who won the debate. I don't want your personal opinion. Who do you think won the debate? So I think more people were like, oh, yeah, you don't need to outlaw it. (laughs) Um, And so they just agreed. Have I won any of these? Because I feel like we've got the Florida Voting Committee tallying these votes (laughs) for some reason. You won the first one. You won the first one. I feel like it's rigged against me. Remember that discount code, fans. Anybody that votes for me, discount code. (laughs) I just, you know, Smitty stole the election. I think that's the. I think that's the hashtag. (laughs) So, as we all know, we got eighteen different topics here. We're going to spin and see what we're going to get that they're going to debate. Dun, 
Ooh, Mandos are bad for disc golf. Okay, so we got a pro versus a con. Whose turn is it this time? I think I'm up. Okay, so Ronnie, you're up. So pro means you think they're bad. Con means you think Mandos are necessary. I'm not up. It's not me. (laughs) Ronnie, you think Mandos are necessary. Ronnie, one minute on the clock to explain why Mandos are necessary for disc golf. And your time begins now. Really, mandatories have to be a part of the game. Uh, there's there's so many factors why a safety being the most the most important. I can't have you throwing a frisbee at my kid on the swing set that's you know immediately adjacent to the hole or throwing out over a busy street or you know covering or 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 not covering up for for my poor design. So. I, I need those mandatories in place for, for those kind of things. But most of all, we need mandatories because who, how, how are we not, if we don't have mandatories, we won't have signs for Gannon, Gannon Burr to, to draw on when he goes to, to silver series. And, and obviously that's the most important thing, right? We need to have those signs out there so he can become a world famous artist. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ronnie. Very compelling argument. Smitty, you get the other side of this. All right. Tell us why Mandos are bad for disc golf. You have one minute and your time starts now. Ronnie, your argument really convinced me that you felt that way. Very compelling. (laughs) Um, Why are Mandos bad for disc golf? Multiple reasons. Number one, if uh, if you can't design a hole without a Mando as a course designer, you're not doing your job. Spend a few more minutes out there, move a tee pad, move a basket, get it away. Second of all, they're ugly. The last thing I want to do is walk up to a beautiful hole playing through an epic tunnel and see a gigantic orange arrow pointing to the left or the right. I don't need to see that. I want the fairway to be clean. Show me where to go so I can just play the hole how I, how I want. That the, takes the creativity out of disc golf, not being able to throw the shot that you see in your eye as you step up to the tee pad. All right. Great arguments from you both. What I need from you, people watching, I want you not to go with what you think you you think personally don't tell us what you think personally who won this argument did ronnie win the debate or did smitty please let us know in the comments all right obviously i mean smitty was even pointing at me just a second ago i mean just watch he was giving it away i want both i want them to vote for who they feel like won the debate but i also want to know their opinion on the debate same yeah so um as far as Mandos go, my honest opinion mm-hmm. is sometimes I think Mandos are great. I don't know that, uh, you know, I always hear the safety. Ronnie brought that up, and you could tell he was being facetious about it. We always hear the safety argument. But uh, a Mando has never once kept a Frisbee from going into a playground. Yeah, I, I completely – dude, Mandos are – they're only in place for people who can throw it well enough to abide by them. Or know what they if, mean. If you have a, yeah, if you have a, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you have a safety issue, if the hole is so poorly designed that you have a legitimate safety issue, much like the, what I described, right? Let's say it's next to a playground. That's only going to, if someone is new or doesn't know what they're doing, that 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 sign up there, it's it's not gravitational pull that direction right the frisbee's still going to go over there if thrown there i i hate i've had this conversation for 25 years mandatories are dumb be a better course designer or you know i i i hate mandatories it's to me it's just a 
it's it's just example one and and a red flag to someone who doesn't know how to design a golf hole. Do you think at all that a Mando could give you a shot shape that maybe forces one shot shape for everyone the same, and that could be a cool thing? I no. 100% think that. Negative. Absolutely. Look at hole six at Herman Hill Park. Have you ever played ball golf and, st- and you walked up and saw a, a, a mandatory sign on one side of the fairway? I have not. You're right, because you're allowed from point A, which is T, to hole point B to get it there however you see in your mind's eye. I just, I, th- I you're, including you're, I mean, shakes. I know you were being a little, including shanks. Now, I might shank it 34 times to get it there. But I'm going to do it my way, and, and I'm going to do it in the way to me has creativity and and uh, to hell with being told what direction I got it. Oh, I hate mandatories. I could go on for 45 minutes about mandatories. I hate them. I, I I'm the opposite. I don't mind them if they're used well. I can think of several good ones just in and around Wichita. I think the one they put up on. Uh, clap west hole one i think that was a great mando to force push people to throw down that tunnel we have enough throw wherever you want holes at clap why why do we need one more that and i'm a flicker and that's a flick hole i or you could just you know put the t a little closer so where you that's the only real option if you want that why force i just don't understand why you have to force it you're, to me, yeah. it's just it's just it's so contrived when you do that. How about a hole seven at USDGC? That's the bamboo hole. Triple Mando. I don't love it, but I'll say this. I'll say this. I give that hole an exception. There's <laughs> exceptions to all, you know, there's exceptions to all rules, right? That hole was just cool. But if it wasn't this awesome bamboo arch would you think the same way on that hole yeah because it would be so easy if it was just there but if but it wouldn't be just there if it wasn't for the triple mandatory right yeah you're true you would have designed a better hole hole one at usdc is another good example of a, a good mando there's a mando that forces them to throw that straight shot which is so much harder to throw because it's the hole is so much shorter than what you guys think it is, and it's more downhill than what you feel. So all these right-handers are trying to throw these really super soft shots, and their highs are out and skipping and rolling down the hill a little bit, where if that Mando wasn't there, they could control the speed and distance a little better with pushing a little hyzer out there with the overstable midrange. I feel like we got humble brag just a little bit there. I've been to USDGC and you have it. Here's my take. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it felt like a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I will say this. I, you would park it every time. Wasp, it's just. Putter. Putter. Just a challenger. I, I'm, I'm not saying that there's not exceptions where I think that maybe it. I just don't like them in general, man. Because most of the time when you have them, it's because someone designed this bad hole. Someone else figured out how to, a way to break the hole. Then we said, "No, you're too good at that shot. We're going to put a mandatory up." Mm-hmm. That that's what that's what happens in most cases, in my opinion. I I, and, I agree with that. I think if a mando is something that is reactive. Um, and not proactive, it's different. Like if the Mando is part of the design, then I think it makes sense as long. But I I agree, a lot of Mandos are put up after the fact, and that's when it's dumb. All right, good conversation. Let us move on in to our next segment, our last segment. Weekly picks, picks, picks. So with our weekly picks, we have three S's on the end of picks because we do a shiner. A sleeper and a stinker for Waco. So let's just jump right into this, boys. Smitty, you can lead us off. Who you got? I'm going to start with stink. Okay. 
This guy finished 45th here last year. I don't want him to stink. I want him to win. But I'm picking him as my stink. I don't feel like the beast suits him as that great. He's more of a power player than a finesse player. And at times, his putts stinks. Going with the goose. Okay. Man, that's a, that's a dude that's had some some pretty good success early in the season. That's a, that's real. That's that's one going out on a limb, in my opinion. Yeah, I th- I like it. That's the way you can really we can really decide if it's a stinker really easy for him. So that's a cool pick. Um, Ronnie, I can, so you, you want me to go? You want me to go stink too? Yeah, yeah let's yeah, all go stink. We all go stink. Smitty, Smitty played the stink card, so we all got to follow, huh? Okay. I'm going to go with a guy who's uh, started four times at Waco. Uh, his average finish is 54th, and he's missed the cash the last two years, in which his best finish was 72nd last year. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with it. Now, changing change to the ball golf course is the only reluctancy I have here, uh, but the beast definitely doesn't really fit his game. I'm going with Ezra Aderholt. Ooh, okay. I like it. I was kind of the golf course made me reluctant on goose as well. Yep. So I'm going to go with the 12th highest rated player in the field. Hold on. I'm taking notes so I can make sure to bet on this, this player. Ezra Robinson is not going to have a good tournament. I think this is, this might, oh, oh, you have a whole laundry list of bad picks for us to choose from. This might mm-hmm. be the worst one. Oh, okay. okay. I'm up there too. Okay, <laughs> good, good, this good. I'm really excited. Shred. I'm really I think excited. dude has see. a chance to win the golf tournament. Okay. I think, yes. I think he can win any golf tournament. I love Ezra. I just think he's going to have a bad tournament. Man, you are bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> all right roddy let's move right into either shiner or sleeper your choice i'm gonna go with my sleep i'm gonna, let's let's go let's play sleepers next okay um i mentioned him earlier in the in the show this guy won waco in 2017 and 2018 back to back years it's been a little while since he's had some real success there he's, he's it's been moderate over the last five years um but I'm going to no bank chance. on this guy no rolling chance. back the clock and having a good week. Um, give me no big germ. Give me no. big germ. I was this close to going big germ. That close, dude. Yeah. Didn't go with him, though. Yeah, I uh, I was this far away from picking big germ. He, um, he's, he's way just, back in the field. So, so even a cash is probably uh, – uh, uh, you know, a, a pickup from him. So I'd say, I think, I'd I think say mid-cash. Cash there. mid-cash would be good. Yeah, my sleeper, we're going to go Nico LaCastro. He's <laughs> the guy on my list. That guy was the guy on my list. He's a sleeper. I mean, he hasn't, uh, you don't think that's a sleeper, Smitty? What do you want to say? We'll see. <laughs> Okay. All right. What are you I looking for? You, look, the same you looking for a you looking for a win, or just a, a top? Where did where did 20? he finish in the last uh, tournament? He's good. No, he's I good. Know. Of course, he's good. But at one he's, time, he was. I thought I he was fin- the best player I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. I mean, he finished top twenty at um, at chess dot com. So, but he's wow. He's, I didn't know that. So quiet. It's so quiet, right? Um, I just mean he's gonna he's a sleeper because he doesn't make a not, lot of noise. But I'm thinking top ten for Nico. Wow, didn't he win two? Didn't he win a couple years ago? He won. He was. So, he was. I remember he was on the. He was on like at least make, lead card, right? Didn't he make? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he won. Didn't he, he make that it. crazy? Make that, make that crazy putt on uh, seventeen. On seventeen. Yep. Yep. Good pick, Lucas. That might be a good one. <laughs> It doesn't sound like sarcasm at all. Thanks, Smitty. No, I, I, <laughs> I think I, it could be. I, I think it's a good pick. Yeah. My sleeper, I don't know how this dude could ever be considered a sleeper. And you guys probably can make fun of me for calling him a sleeper. But I've been hearing 
washed up, done, never going to win again. The GOAT, Paul McBeth. I think he could win it. I mean, it's after so shooting 52nd last tournament, I mean, I mean, I think he's a sleeper at this point. So I get it. I, I don't know if he's a sleeper. I mean, we're talking about, I think, the second highest rated player in the world a dude that won a world championship less than 24 months ago, uh, won this tournament two years ago. Um, you know, but if ever there's been a time when the McBeast was a sleeper, I guess this is it, you know? So yeah. I guess if you're ever going to get a chance to use him you, and get away with it, this might be the one until he wins well, this week. And then I'm going to say, nobody gets well, to use the beast as a sleeper the rest of the year. I, yeah, I can't believe I even looked at him as a sleeper, honestly. I yeah, I looked at him as a shiner. Well, maybe yeah. he is. Oh, let's find out. Right now, as we go into shiners, uh, I'm going to give you mine. This is my stinker last, last week. But Simon is going to shine this week. You're Shiner? such a flip flopper. He could shine can, any week, though. I know. He could. He could. <laughs> he's a good pick. He's a great pick. Mine, the defending champ. This kid played good in Florida, minus a couple of holes. He was in it to win it. He has the touch, forehand, backhand to play at the beast. He's got the distance to take care of the long holes, distance to take care of the ball golf course. Kyle Klein. Can't be mad at that one. Nope, cannot. The dude's the dude's one of the five best players on the planet, in my opinion. All right, Ronnie. My shine is someone that I believe was uh, Smitty's shine last week. Um, and we kind of bullied him into not being able to take him anymore. But I'm going to take Calvin Heimberg. Uh, this dude... Averaged fourth place for an entire season. Uh, he finished 32nd, I believe, at chess, um, where he really just didn't have anything going the whole time. I see a bounce back coming for Calvin Heimberg. Give me, give, yeah. give me, give me the, give me the cyborg this week. All right, 34th at chess.com. Yeah, that's uh, it's hard to bet against him twice in a row. Um, he's definitely going to get some revenge for his showing. I just sometimes just don't know where that guy's at mentally. And I think that's a good thing, right? Cause he doesn't get too high. doesn't get too low. So I think we could see something good out of him. I'm, I'm actually rooting for every single person we discussed, except for Lucas's pick of Nico. I think, well, I think we had eight good picks out of, out of the nine there. Gosh. No, I'm, gonna say, I'm not saying which pick was bad. I'm just saying, I think we had eight good ones. Yeah, it's okay. I'm clipping this. That means I had at least two good ones, and that's the nicest thing you ever said to me. <laughs> oh, All right. So yeah. let's talk our Survivor League, boys, because out of 15 people, we only have three left, and one of them is here with us tonight, Mr. Oh, Ronnie Unruh. Survivor. <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> has um, he uh, has he given you his pick yet, Lucas? He has, but he gets to I share mine right in. in. I turned mine in. You want me to go first? Yep, you want to go? Run it first, okay? Yep. Um, I I was really really torn this week. Uh, I had Calvin on. I had Calvin on my list of of potentials. Isaac Robinson. Uh, I wish I could have used Kyle Klein, but I used him last week, last event. Um, I settled on the Saki bomb, Ricky Wysocki. Um, This dude only missed the top 15 twice in all of 2023 in what people called a down year. So he's, he's coming off a second at chess. He looks, uh, he looks like he's healthy, which is always a big key for Rick. Um, adding two more rounds on a ball golf course for a guy who throws it nine miles and makes most of the putts he looks at. I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the sake bomb this week. Yeah, it can't can't go wrong there. Let's see what Patsy and uh who's our and Cameron. Nick. Nick. No, it's Nick. 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 Yeah. Nick. Yep. 
So let's take a look here. Bad All right. Team. Only Bad two team. left. Z. And let's see right here. Who hope, hope one Nick, of them's got uh Chandler Kramer. Or Nico. Nick said Kyle Klein. Oh, Nick. I hate it. Nick's hate moving it. on. God, I hate it. And then Patsy said Kyle Klein. <laughs> oh. So at the end of the day, Ronnie, if Kyle has a bad tournament, you might be taking home $150. Man, I'm going to tell you what, I got to call OK too and uh, see if we can't split that old 150 right down the middle for a, for a 20 second place finish this week. <laughs> Yeah, be down for that. I mean, that's not going to lose him much money at all. <laughs> I'm sure. Se- I'm sure seventy five dollars <laughs> makes a difference to that guy. Yeah, high stakes. Wow. <laughs> oh okay. man, what I need what I need you to do here, kid. I got a big bet, hundred and fifty bucks. I need you to <laughs> need you to finish out of the top fifteen. I hate to be up against Kyle. Well, I mean, I guess I, I guess it works out for me if 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 he doesn't play well. I you know I have a chance to to sneak in with with only beating one person but it really stinks that it's the guy that if i had my choice of anybody this week it's the guy i'm taking yeah i mean honestly great choices uh by both of them you know surprisingly did you know this one two three he's the 11th highest rated so he's not even in the top 10 of ratings i don't care isn't that crazy i know but isn't that just crazy to think about Look at the pro tour rankings, though. I think he's fifth or sixth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't believe in the in the PDJ rating system anyway. Um, I I, I kind of know what my eyes tell me, and my eyes tell me that dude is among the top one percent of the top one percent. Yeah. Hold on, just adding PDJ rating to our Willa debate. Not a big deal. <laughs> oh, we better. <laughs> We better carve out a long time for <laughs> that when that one comes up. Better hope that one comes up on a week we got nothing to talk about. Speaking of nothing to talk about, hey people, send us some rules questions or some courtesy violation questions. We need something to talk about that you want to hear us talk about, not that we want to talk about. So, but we want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> crystal, Crystal. Thank you, Smitty. This is why this is why I direct the show, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was clear as mud. <laughs> but, but somehow, it. but somehow I, I, I got it. I got it right on. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> let us know what you want to. Let us know what you want to hear about. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, great show. Had a lot of fun. As always, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Again, thanks to our anonymous donor, you can get this podcast on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, anywhere where you get your podcast. We are there. Thanks again, boys. Anything you want to share before we sign off? Go, Nico! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, let's go. Come on, Ricky. (laughs) All right, see you, everyone.